Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Joy of Japanese Business, uh, the third series of Japan Business Time with Rochelle Karp. And、uh, today we have a great subject from Brad Ford that got both of us buzzing when we saw it actually. And it's a, a question about、um, uh, how to overcome,、uh, at least first of all, to understand、um, the Japanese attachment to extreme customization and dealing and, and the, the reluctance to deal with packages or stuff that's not built here. That won't work here. This is Japan. That, that、right. kind of thing. Or that won't work in our company because our company is special. We're all like snowflakes. Every, yes,、everyone. every company is like a snowflake. <laughs> so hang around to hear about the snowflakes in just a minute. We'll be right back. In consulting,、uh, and consulting is a funny thing. People hire consultants to consult with them to be told what to do, and consultants will say the best practice in your industry is this. And the Japanese, often the shachou, will say, Well, that sounds wonderful. We need change.、Uh, I need to impress my shareholders with something new, so go and do it. But as soon as you start talking with the line workers and the people on the ground, oh, that would never work in our company because our company is special. So and so, you know, and how dare you even make that suggestion? Um, consulting is a miserable, miserable industry in Japan because you're dealing with these basically, I, I identify it as shokunin, it's the artisan sort of culture. They, the pride and belief in their way of doing things that they develop. And, and it's not,、yeah. there's no uniform Japanese way. These Japanese companies are Every, huge. Everyone has their own in house, specialized way of doing things. Yes. Yeah.、Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, how extreme is it? How, well, what, what is behind this、uh, extreme sort of. Uh, it's, it's true, there, there really don't seem to be standard MBA manuals like you expect to see for Japanese businesses, like you hear about、uh, in the US or Europe. Right, right. No, no, there really isn't. And I think what, what, I think what it is, is part of it is what you said it's the shokunin、mm. idea of the way you do things is learned、mm. from your senpai, to go refer back to a past episode. Without question. <laughs> yes. You learn it from your senpai and you do it exactly the way it was done. Yeah. And it's, it's、um, the Japanese term is minarai. It's,、yeah. it's learn by watching someone else doing it. So you're not going to be so flexible about a methodology if the way you learned was all about replicating someone else's approach. And don't forget, the whole way you've been evaluated, your whole definition of good and bad for your entire working life is determined by how well you conform. Yes. So anything inherently, even if it's a better way or a more efficient way, The worst thing that a kohai can do at a, at a real traditional old fashioned Japanese company is propose a better way of doing something. That'll annoy everybody, right? Yes. <laughs> Because that will actually, you, you will be perceived as being a slacker for, for, for looking for an easier way. I mean, the whole idea is you have to build up your character doing it that right, way. Right, right. Um, but I think the other thing is, is because everyone has learned these very、oh, id- idiosyncratic and company specific ways of doing things.、Yeah. And traditionally, people were under this lifetime employment.、Yeah. So that's the only thing that they've ever seen in their entire career. They have no context for the different variety of possible ways of doing things. And they cling on to that one way they've been trained as the one thing that they know. Yeah, yeah. And it's very threatening to have that be changed. Yeah. And so this is per- pervasive. And anyone who does、um, you know, business with Japan or tries to sell、uh, some global solutions, packages, you know, sort of best practices, these、right. things are very hard to sell in Japan. Yeah, and everything has to be kind of tweaked to work here. Yeah. So, other than the most typical solution to this problem of complete capitulation <laughs> and just falling in and making these horrible, crappy, you know, Frankenstein sort of systems,、uh, systems and products that often happen when people try to do this, which I think is the, the way that people end up getting beaten into doing.、Um, we, if you're advising American businesses on persuading Japanese to,、mm-hmm. ex- to, to change or、right. to accept these k i n d of processes, I mean, What is the way in for doing that, do you think? Oh boy.、Um, sometimes it's showing who outside of Japan is doing this. Like, this is what Google yeah. does, yeah. right? Or whatever other company, or this is what GE does,、yeah. you know, what, whoever it is that they're admiring. So I think that that's a big one. That's And huge, also,、actually. here are the gobs of money that you could save by doing this. Yeah. Well, that, that, 
so that's how you pitch to the shachor, and that's how you sell it, frankly. And that is how these things get sold. Um, the money saving will sell to the shachor because that's what he can show to the shareholders. Right, right. And the, look, this is what everyone else does. And this seems irrational that, and we are going to do a subject, by the way, in this series, hopefully, on persuasion, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is tied to that. As much as you want to be able to sell based on the logic and the, uh, the, the good business sense, and you want to be the first to think of this, Generally, when you've got a, a consensus-based decision-making process and, and very risk-averse people in that decision-making process, they don't want to be the first. Even if it's a really good idea, even if you're the genius who invented the light bulb, you can go around to get everyone to agree to make the light bulb. And they'll say, oh, I want to wait till someone else makes it and they, you're just proven to be a good idea. Right. Um, but if you can show a precedent, uh, an effective precedent, that is the best way. If you look at the, the industry leaders, um, and that is how you sell it. Um, although... So that uh, that is right, but there again, selling it on the ground, one on one. I mean, that, that is tough because right, you're, right. you're 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 digging into the existence and the, the purpose for life for a lot of people. Right, right. Um, but yes, I mean, we'll, we'll, let's talk a little bit more. What is this extreme customization that? Can, can you think of some good examples of, of where where that's happened, where where Japanese stuff gets treated? Well, I just see it in my work all the time where, you know, obviously for, for training summers and things like that, yeah. any client needs some customization. But yeah. I've just had Japanese clients that like every single thing mm. has to be tweaked and it's, it's, um, it's, it's, you know, everyone needs to put their stamp on it. Yeah. I, I, I've seen crazy examples of this, and this is—I mean, this is kind of universal. The, the most extreme case I can remember was like from 15 years ago, um, but where a company was upgrading from using mainframes to using regular, normal, up modern PCs. Um, but their mainframes had these. This was from the early 1970s, where there wasn't even a standard keyboard layer yet, and so they had customized keyboards. Um, oh, no. that had keys that don't exist on keyboards anymore. Like they had, a, in addition to the return button, they had an execute button. And half of their, their, their programs that they use on this mainframe program would rely on having the special execute button for certain functions. Oh my gosh. And we said, well, okay, you can just do all that with the return button and we're just gonna you know, customize it like this. But the old fellas weren't, weren't having it. They, they insisted we have to use the, we don't want a mouse. Get rid of these crazy fangled you know, mouse things. We don't want those. We want to use our 1972 mainframe keyboard with your Windows-based system. And we want to use that execute button where we always used it. And you don't understand, the world is going to come to a crashing end if we have to change the way that we do things to accommodate your standardized keyboard. <laughs> so, oh my. <laughs> and, and, we could, and I was at a Japanese company that was providing the service for that, that capitulated. They they did. They capitulated and they gave in and, and, and reprogrammed basically all of when I was there with Microsoft and these other companies that were basically agreeing to to do this. And it was just have an execute key. Oh no, that's horrific. That's uh, a pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, and the thing is though, I mean, this was done at a time when all of these system upgrades were new, and there have been enough of these kind of huge disasters now that hopefully there are some scare stories to per but, also persuade people. Yeah, people to go along with it a little bit more now. But. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, when people dig in, they can really dig in sometimes. Uh, but yeah, it, it, there is there is just inherent conservatism, and I, we'll we'll get to persuasion. I think that's another topic we have lined up. But um, mm -hmm. definitely persuading people based on upper levels, based on savings, and certainly based on precedent. Right. That's how you do it. But we'll get to that. Um, more topics to come. So uh, hang around. Joy of Japanese business with Rochelle Cobb. Yes. Hi. Sorry, she was going to say her own name. I did it wrong, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, you can say my name, it's okay. Okay. Rochelle. So, see, see us next week. Same time. Peace. Peace.